<laughs> Shigama. Hi, Ellis. Thank you so much for coming to Denmark on behalf of the hundreds of people you helped at the weekend, the thousands of people who are students all over the world, and the millions of people that have seen you on YouTube. And a special thank you from me, personally. <laughs> My pleasure entirely, Alan, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to visit Copenhagen, which is one of my favorite European cities. Yeah, I always joke with the Danes that they don't realize how good they've got it. It is one of the most special places on the planet. It is a wonderful city. Yeah, we're, we're so happy to be here. So we have a, a mutual <coughs> person that we admire, and his name is Albert Einstein, and he said many years ago that the most important question you can ever ask yourself is if the universe is a friendly place or not. Oh, absolutely correct. Most people revere Einstein because of his scientific genius. He discovered or formulated the special theory of relativity, the general theory of relativity. He discovered the uh, photoelectric effect. And that's what he got the Nobel Prize for, by the way. But those scientific discoveries were great, but they pale in comparison to the other things that he did. And in particular, as a philosopher, he asked a question of everyone. He said, do you believe the universe is friendly? And he said, this is the most important question you will ever ask yourself. And that is true, because if you follow the logic of what he outlined, it will completely transform your life. So... Sometimes the universe on the surface would seem to give us something that we don't like. Mm. But you would uh, say to us, it's just its guiding hand giving us what we need at the exact time to get us to where we need yeah. to go. <laughs> That's the model, Alun, and here's how it works. There are some people who believe that the universe is not friendly and the sole purpose of the universe is to frustrate us. We all know people like that who always see everything that happens as in some way disappointing. The vast overwhelming majority of us believe that the universe is neither friendly nor unfriendly, it just is. It's not aware of who you are and it couldn't care less. Sometimes it seems to be working with you, sometimes it seems to be working against you, but it's just random. By and large, the universe is indifferent and uncaring. That's the universe that the vast majority of people live in. But just imagine that the universe were friendly. Now, friends don't shaft friends, do they? Of course not. So if friends don't shaft friends, then if something happens to you and that's something the universe gave you and you don't like it, nevertheless, there must be a reason for it because a friendly universe gave it to you. Mm. So you get something and it's not something that you want, but it may be precisely the thing that you need. So I like to compare it to you're a small child and you want a tub of ice cream. You don't want, <coughs> sorry, you're a small child and you want a tub of ice cream, but your parents give you fruits and vegetables. You don't want fruits and vegetables, you want ice cream. And it's only much later when you have a different level of maturity and understanding that you can give thanks that you had wise parents who gave you fruits and vegetables and not ice cream. What if the universe were exactly like that? It gives you something that you don't want, but maybe you need it. You want to get promoted and you get a pink slip. Maybe you needed that pink slip at this point in your life. And a, and a pink slip is... Oh, oh, a pink slip is you got fired. You got fired. Yeah. Correct. And that's, that's happened to so many people we know. They got fired, they think it's the end of the world, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, when one door closes, Whist us open up, yes, yeah. absolutely. Now, the interesting thing, Alan, is this. Regardless of whether or not the universe is a friendly place, if you believed the universe was a friendly place, your life would improve. Because instead of bemoaning everything that happened to you, you would look for, what is the lesson here for me? Try to learn it as fast as possible and move on. Yeah. And if the universe were actually friendly, then your life would be totally transformed. Yeah, and I, I, I thank you for that wisdom and also Einstein's as well because it's made a, a big difference to, to, to my life and many people that I know. Yes, it will. And here is something else. Just because you believe that a model is, model is superior and the friendly universe is a model, 
Just because you believe that a model is superior doesn't necessarily mean you can adopt it. Mm. But there are things that you can do which will make it easier for you to live in a friendly universe. And the first thing that you can do is start looking for signs that the universe is friendly. Mm. And if you start looking for signs that the universe is friendly, you will find dozens of them, hundreds of them. Record them. Put them someplace where you can review them. And as you see how many instances of this there are, in your head you will reach a tipping point. You know, maybe the universe really is friendly. At that time, try harder and you'll tip over into a friendly universe. And I can tell you that is one heck of a nice place to be. Mm. And you talk about in, in, in your writings, in your books, in your talks, about looking for the miracles every day and cel celebrating mm -hmm. the miracles. Absolutely, yes. And one thing that that I've enjoyed playing with over the years is it's not about the destination, it's about enjoying the journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've got a fantastic way of taking the ancient wisdom from the East, the great masters, and putting it in a way that Western people like, like uh, us can, <laughs> can understand. <laughs> yeah. And you talk about the process, a lot about the process. Could mm -hmm. you share that with us, please? Certainly. What happens is, from a very young age, we have been trained to be goal-oriented. So we set a goal for ourselves, and then we undertake activities that we believe appropriate to reaching that goal. And we live our lives as, I set a goal for myself, I succeeded, life's a blast. Or I set a goal for myself, I failed, life is terrible. We live on a sinusoidal curve oscillating between elation and despair and we tend to spend more time at the despair end of the spectrum. That's a lousy way to live. We have to understand clearly that a goal is a destination, an outcome, and an outcome is fundamentally outside our control. It will be what it is. I think that's so important. Could you say that one more time? Certainly. The goal is a destination. Whether or not we actually reach our destination is beyond our control. Whether or not we will get to the outcome we want, whether we will reach our goal or not, is outside our control. It is prey to innumerable factors, any one of which could derail us. Mm. So, allowing our happiness to be contingent upon something which is totally outside our control, it's a tough, fool thing to do. What is within our control, more or less, are the actions we undertake. Mm. So if we pour our emotional energy into our actions and not the outcome, we will find that the journey itself becomes a joy. And ultimately, the journey is the only thing we have. The destination is a mirage. You get there and then you're off someplace else. You always have the journey. It takes the vast majority of the time you have on Earth. Learn to enjoy the journey. And the funny thing, well, the really funny thing is, the less you care about the destination, the more likely you are to get there. So there's an inverse relationship between how you don't care about the goal mm. and how fast you'll get there. Absolutely. Yes, there is. So just letting it go. Let it go and you're more likely to get there. And uh, one thing that uh, I used it actually yesterday when I was playing badminton was uh, mm. to do the best you can just every day. Yes. And you've got a fantastic story to share with us about that, I hope. <laughs> Something basketball related, I remember. <laughs> yes. <laughs> every day what you concentrate on is Am I doing the very best I can on this particular day? Mm. John Wooden was the first person to reach the Basketball Hall of Fame, both as a player and as a coach. He used to coach UCLA, and he led UCLA to an unprecedented number of appearances in the final and victories. And he always used to say, Whenever I started working with a new team, I never talked about winning or outscoring opponents. I always talked about when it's over and you look in the mirror, did you do the best you were capable of? If you did the best you were capable of, the score really doesn't matter. But if you did the best you were capable of, I fancy you'll find the score to your liking. Mm. 
That's a perfect metaphor of investing in the process, not the outcome. And it will pay you very rich dividends if you adopt that. And it makes life much more simple. Yes, and, f- and fun and joyful. Yeah. Don't forget that. Yeah, and I bet you John was probably about the size of us if he put us together. Oh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> An yes. enormous man with an o- enormous uh, wisdom. Mm-hmm. So one thing about Denmark, it mm-hmm. being the best country in uh, The happiest in, in the country. <laughs> well, it, they say it's the happiest, but I have to say to my Danish friends, I don't always believe that because I think we moan a little bit too much in this country. Uh, and gratitude is also something that's dear to your heart and very powerful. Mm-hmm. Yes. We spend too much of our emotional energy focusing on the two, three or four things that are wrong in our lives. Mm-hmm. More precisely on the two, three or four things that we are bitterly labeled wrong in our lives. We forget that much of what is, quote, wrong, unquote, in our lives may actually be stuff that spurs us on to do things that we need to do. And they may be, be <coughs> and they may be blessings in disguise. It's the universe guiding us. The universe guiding us. That's yeah. a good way to look at it. So what I advocate is flipping it around. Yes, there are things in your life that you would prefer not be there. There are things in your life you would like to change. But there is so much in your life that is good that you totally ignore and take for granted. Consciously bring those to mind, consciously give thanks, feel gratitude for them, and from that space of gratitude, address the things that you would like to change in your life. It brings a different perspective and you'll find you're far, far, far more successful. And what I like to do with gratitude is, uh, before I go to sleep, just use a few minutes Mm-hmm. celebrating the, the, the things that are fun and they can even be simple things like at a nice meal or yep. we're living in a country where mm-hmm. there's freedom of expression, it's clean, mm-hmm. great sports facilities and as a byproduct you get a great night's sleep. Absolutely and also don't dismiss things as say oh you know this is thing, this is small or this is a small thing or this is trivial. Anything that evokes in you a sense of gratitude is worth celebrating. Just the fact that you can feel the fresh air on your face, that you can breathe deeply, that you have a wonderful family, anything. Mm. Just be grateful, period. And it's also a great way to start the day, just using a few minutes when you wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. And it's great to get down to that many times during the day. Mm. In fact, what what I would like to say is that everybody has a default emotional domain of appreciation Mm. and gratitude. Because when you are in that appreciation and gratitude domain, you're not depressed, you're not dejected, you're not angry, you're not prey to all of the unwholesome emotions that make our lives miserable. Mm. And we're all brothers and sisters. We're yes. all connected. We are, we're always all connected. So community consciousness is, uh, is maybe the way forward in the, in the exciting world we, uh, we live oh, today. Abs- absolutely. So instead of competing with each other, more cooperating with each other. Yes. In fact, I believe that you cannot truly be happy and cannot truly appreciate and show gratitude unless you recognize that your life is to be one of service Mm -hmm. where in some fashion you do something for the greater good. I consider myself extremely fortunate because all of my professional life is devoted to helping persons see that they can become better versions of themselves. And I get letters and emails from all over the world on a regular basis. Yeah. Doing what you love to do and finding a way to do it that you can put food on the ha- table and serving other people at the same time. Yes. Yeah. And I am looking forward to uh, coming and seeing you in September yes. in London. Yes. <laughs> to go on your course. And if anybody's interested about uh, Shigemar's course, then send me an email and I'll, I'll send you all the details. So I get. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming to Denmark. We really uh, appreciate it. Uh, And on behalf of all the people around the world that your wisdom is uh, helping, give me a high five. Yes. And do point out to your members that I'm I'm wearing the gratitude band. I forgot forgot mine this morning. If anybody would like a gratitude bracelet, then uh, on the link below in the video, we'll show you where to get one. Thank you for watching. And a wonderful day to you.